Temperatures rising, and that can mean a lot of danger for your furry friend. Dogs and cats can overheat more easily than you might think. Joining me now with advice to keep your pets safe, Dr. Christian Broadhurst with the Clay Humane Society. And this is Doogie. Doogie's a little puppy. He is. Oh, he's so cute. He's a good boy. Hi, Doogie. He's kicking a case of the demodectic mange, so oh. he inherited non-contagious mange. But that's why he's a little naked right now. Yeah, and the thing is, is when I look, you know, you could see his little skin, and this could be... I mean, this could be dangerous. You know, I was outside with my dogs yesterday. They have a lot of fur, mm -hmm. but it, it did get me thinking. So, first thing, do they need sunscreen? Um, if you have a dog like Doogie, mm -hmm. minus most of his fur, or a white dog, especially right here on the bridge of the nose, then yeah, sunscreen is a great idea. Generally, a thick hair coat will protect their, their back and their head, <laughs> but noses, and we got to watch out for those sunbathers. A lot of dogs will roll on their bellies where there's very little fur, and they can absolutely sunburn. Okay, so I know dogs don't sweat, so it's, it's you know, hard to tell... Um, you know, when they're overheating, but what are the signs that you need to look for? Signs of overheating in dogs generally are, you know, first of all, they'll be excessively panting because mm -hmm. that is the way they normally get rid of excess heat. If they stop panting, that's a huge problem. If they act drunken or staggering or lethargic, vomiting, diarrhea. Your dog's out in the sun and you haven't given them a substantial break and they're acting weird, it's time to get indoors. So if your dog, if, especially if you have an outside dog, I know we're going into the hotter months, how much water do you need to leave out there every day for your pet? As much as possible. Okay. Um, that is one of the, I mean, I would, if you have a dog who doesn't have access to the indoors, one of those self-filling, um, you know, mm -hmm. spigots that will continue to top itself up, do I taste good? I, it's a apparently. fantastic um, way of going. Um, relying on buckets, they can knock buckets over, they can drink buckets empty, and then you're out of luck. So, and, and what about with indoor dogs? Same thing, just keep refilling the water bowl in the just summer? Just keep refilling the water bowl, yep, absolutely. And once you take them out and they come back in, make sure they have access to water, because they're going to want it. Because these guys also, we run about 98 degrees. These guys normally run between 100 and 102 degrees, and they're wearing a fur coat. So, yes, yeah. it doesn't take much. So let's talk about the exercise avenue, because I know a lot of people, you know, we know you love to get out there with your animals, take them for a run, get absolutely. exercise for everybody in the family. Um, but do we need to tone it down a little bit during the summer for the dogs? It, it's if you have a dog who is athletic and in shape and short haired yeah. and they're used to running in Florida, that's fine. But if you've got a couch potato or a big hairy dog, I'd keep it to the mornings and the, and the evenings. I would not be out in the blazing heat in the middle of the day unless you're literally at the beach. But then if they're at the beach, they'll often want to drink seawater, which is equally dangerous. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a no-no. Absolutely. Um, what happens if, the, if, if your dog gets into that, though? If, if your dog gets into seawater, yeah. well, it's, first of all, you need to offer them as much fresh water as possible to dilute them out. They can often, <laughs> they will often vomit it up because they're not mm -hmm. supposed to be drinking that. Um, but if your dog has any serious medical problems this <laughs> summer with heat or saltwater ingestion, absolutely get to the vet. ASAP. Okay, and then so tell us a little bit about Doogie. Doogie is just a few months old. He's a, like two and a half months old or so, and uh, he came to us, um, believe it or not, even more naked than he is now. Really? Um, yep, and a skin and really crusty. I mean, he doesn't smell great now, but you should have smelled him when he came in. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, all this fuzz on his head is actually new growth, and like oh, I said, good. he was he's recovering from demodectic mange, and which is, is he a beagle. We have no idea. He's a beagle hound. He's tricolor. <laughs> I can tell you that much. But that's more than we could tell you a week ago. Oh, well, so. that, no, that's great. And will he eventually be up for adoption? He will. And he will eventually actually look like a normal dog. Uh, so, you know what? I oh, know. And he's, oh, he's yep, don't eat the, my mic. He's eat the yep, microphone. Don't, don't need a microphone. <laughs> he's so cute, though. All right, so for more information on pet care services, check out the Clay Humane website. We've posted a link on the Morning Show page of news4jacks.com. Don't forget to check out that pet section, too. It's under the Entertainment tab because you're going to find a list of pets that are up for adoption. And don't forget, Doogie will be available soon.